Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Islamic terrorism and the foreign policy of the United States toward Egypt, particularly the Coptic Christians. Today we interview Pastor Usama Dakdak, who has firsthand expertise. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. And this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a celebrity interview with an Egyptian Coptic Christian who has come to America, now pastors a ministry in Minnesota, and we are joined now live via Skype with my new friend, Pastor Usama Dakdak. God bless you, sir, and welcome to the program. Wonderful audience. So, so, Pastor, you are the leader of the Straight Way Ministries. Can you talk about that and introduce yourself to the to the people? Sure. Uh, I was in Asia, good at 57 years old, exactly in the month of October, on the 23rd, 1969. I was born in a Christian family. My daddy was one of the Baptist ministers in the in Egypt, and uh, I also grew up in a Muslim country, the country of Egypt. So I uh, went to the public school of Egypt and uh, I learned about Islam all, all years of my life until college. And when I was in college, I uh, got to study Islamic law, Sharia, for a good couple of years. So I got to see both sides of the coin. And I learned Christianity and the truth about Christianity. And that's how I got saved when I was 11 years old, baptized the following year when I was 12 years old. But I also learned about Islam uh, from all over the schools in Egypt and in college. I came to America uh, 24 years ago, and I was uh, surprised or say shocked to see Muslims in America. And uh, I was warning the American people for a good uh, uh, nine years or so uh, to learn the truth about Islam. Sadly, there was not too many ears to listen as we even sit among the liberals in the United States of America. Uh, around 11, I was in the state to be a missionary overseas to the country of Indonesia. That to try to twice, uh, and uh, while we are prepare preparing ourselves to make the trip to Indonesia, September 11 took place, and that's why the Lord changed our plans, and we stayed here in America. And it's been a good 16 years. Uh, we travel and do the ministry of the Straight Way of Grace Ministry, uh, which is uh, to teach the truth about Islam to the Americans, and also to reach uh, with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ to our Muslim friends. So you are leader of the Straight Way of Grace Ministry. It's a Christian ministry, and you were born a Christian in Egypt. Your parents are Coptic Christians, but you were raised there until age 24. You came to America, and then you studied Islam for a couple of years. Have you also uh, translated any books into English? Talk about that. Well, I, I studied Islam all the years of my life, not just a couple of years. The couple of years are for studying Sharia in college in Egypt, Islamic law. But uh, when we came to America, the first thing I decided to do is uh, to expose the truth about Islam for the American people by simply reading the Quran to the American people. And as I went through a good thing, translation, uh, Yusuf Ali Shakir, Bakhtala Rashad, uh, Siri, and all these wonderful uh, Muslim uh, translators, and I was surprised that they all sugarcoated the Quran. As a matter of fact, I was working on my new book, which is Exposing the Truth about the Quran, the revelation of error. And when I was trying to quote all these English translation of the Quran, I found that, that the errors, which is very clearly written in the Arabic language, now it is hidden in the English language. So obviously we could not do that book uh, because we have to have an accurate English translation first of the Quran. And that's why we went ahead and spent four years to translate the Quran accurately to uh, in the English language. And that is the Generous Quran, which is available on our website and on, on Amazon. The Generous Quran is the first and only true accurate English translation of the Quran available in the English language for those who speak English. And in it, we actually 
uh, translated accurately without uh, taking words out or without sugar coating other words. We just translated for what it is from Arabic to English. And after that, we obviously wrote our new book, Exposing the Truth About the Quran, The Revelation of Error, a good uh, two volume, 830 some pages from uh, the teaching of the Quran, the interpretation of the great Muslim scholar Ibn Kassir. We shown all the errors and the contradiction which contain all over the pages of the Quran. And we also expose some of the lies which Muslims try to spread in America. Uh, Islam is a love of peace for religion or uh, Muhammad is a prophet of peace, prophet, prophet of love. As we looked at his life in the last chapter, chapter 41, a good uh, 60 some pages. And it, it was the hardest chapter because I have to summarize the life of Muhammad, his bibliography from literally a good 2,000 plus pages to 64 pages. But thank God the book is finished and it is a now for people to read. So hold on a second. If we go to thestraightway.org, not only can we can get an accurate English translation of the Quran, but we can get your two volume set exposing the truth about Islam. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Pastor Usama Dakdak about some of the teachings of Islam that are being sugarcoated by other translations. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb. And that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again live via Skype from Minnesota with Pastor Usama Dakdak, who is a Coptic Christian from Egypt, was raised in a mostly Muslim country, and now he has written a book exposing the truth about Islam. Pastor Dakdak, I wanna ask you about your testimony of Jesus Christ. How did you become a Christian at age 11? Well, it was a revival meeting in my father's church, and an older pastor by the name of Sadiq was silly. He was actually 81 years old when he sat with me in our living room after the revival meeting on Sunday evening, and he asked me the question, are you saved? And I thought maybe because he's an older gentleman, he did not know who I am, so I I used myself, I said, my daddy is Reverend Dakdok. And he said, I know your father, I'm asking you, are you saved? And uh, it, it was like uh, first time in my life, somebody asked me this question because, you know, I heard my father give the uh, invitation for the people in the church after every sermon. And I have attended hundreds of sermons, but I never thought that my daddy was talking to me. He's just talking to the people in the church. And uh, I examined my heart on that night and I, answered this pastor, Pastor Sadiq, by telling him, 
I never asked Jesus into my heart. I never uh, uh, had this spiritual birth, the, uh, the, the second birth, as Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Because I saw it since I was just born in a Christian home. My daddy is a preacher. That means I'm automatically a Christian. Obviously, he shares the gospel with me on that night. And I accepted Christ as Lord and my Savior to me personally in that night. He was supposed to baptize me, but he went to be with the Lord in the same year. And I was baptized the following year by another pastor in Egypt. So that okay. is how you invited Jesus to come and live inside of your heart. And is, isn't humanity have the same basic problem, whether you are Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or atheist, uh, is that unless you have invited Jesus Christ to come inside of your heart and rule inside of your heart, then you do not know him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. You see, our sins is what separates us from God the Father. And because God the Father loves us so much, he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross on our behalf and uh, as a substitute. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took our sins away and he gave us his righteousness. And now nothing separates us from God the Father. And that's how we can have eternal life. That's why Jesus is the only way. And no one, no matter what religion or background believes he have, no one can come to the Father except through Jesus because there is not any other Savior but Yeshua the Christ, the Savior Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. So Pastor, when you were translating the Quran from Arabic into English, did it surprise you that the Quran talks about Jesus and what do you think Islam teaches about Jesus Christ? Well, it's amazing. That's a very wonderful question because Muslims in America will tell us that Jesus is mentioned in the Quran more than Muhammad. Muhammad's only mentioned four times, but Jesus mentioned 20 some times. Obviously, Jesus' name was not even mentioned once in the Quran. The Jesus of Muhammad has nothing to do with the Jesus of the Bible. You see, even the name Jesus in the Arabic language is who are. We never mentioned once in the Quran, Muhammad, it changed it to this. And if these Muslims, the name Isa means, you will see that it is a word with the enemy. The name Yeshua, the Hebrew word Yeshua, means Savior. You see, the Jesus of Muhammad is not the Son of God. He's just a prophet or a good teacher or a good man. But if you examine the teaching of the Bible about Jesus, you will see he's not a prophet. He's a false prophet. You don't see him as a good teacher or a good man, but as a blasphemer, as a sinful man. Why? Because Jesus in the Bible declared to us that he is God. He is the Son of God. And in his prophecies, he said he will die on the cross and he will rise again from the death on the third day. And that's exactly what was written even in the Old Testament prophecies. But according to the Quran, Jesus is not the Son of God and he did not die on the cross for our sins. And that's how we know for sure that Muhammad is not a true prophet because he denied the deity of Christ and the work of Christ on the cross. And as I just said earlier, no one can get saved except through Jesus Christ, which means in Islam, there is no salvation. As a matter of fact, Allah, the God of Muhammad, has nothing to do with Allah, the God of the Bible. Allah, the God of Muhammad, has no son. But our God, even the Christian in Egypt, who use the word Allah, we know when we say Allah, God, we're talking about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Quran teaches, if Christians continue to believe in the Trinity, or to believe that Jesus, son of Mary, son of Virgin Mary, is God, that makes them infidels? Read Quran 5, 72. Read Quran 5, 73, where Allah declared, infidel indeed are those who said that Christ, son of Virgin Mary, is God, or those who believe in God to be a triune, a father, son, or spirit. And sadly, Allah, the God of Muhammad, ordered the Muslims to behead all the Christians who believe in these Christian beliefs, as it is written in Quran chapter 47 verse 4, when Allah said, When you meet those who became infidels, strike their necks until you have made a great slaughter among them. That's why Muslims in the last 1400 years killed around 270 million, 270 million Christians in planet Earth. And that is the smallest number you can find from the search or any uh, written materials. So I have, know, I, I have so I many have, questions, Pastor, and you're, you're doing a wonderful explanation of this. But... If Muhammad said that Jesus is a prophet, and if prophets can never tell a lie, then was Jesus lying in John 14, 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. 
was Jesus telling the truth or was Jesus lying as a prophet that Muhammad admits as a prophet? Very good question. It's amazingly when I go to the liberal churches who bring Muslims to teach that there are other ways, there is another uh, uh, road to heaven, which is Islam. When I read that verse, John 14, 6, immediately the preachers of the church, not the Muslim in the church, the liberal preacher will tell you, oh, that's your interpretation. No, reading the Bible is not interpretation. <laughs> the Bible is very clear. Jesus cannot be a good teacher or a good man or a prophet and be a big liar because this is the truth. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that means Muhammad is a false prophet. And if Muhammad is a true prophet, that means Jesus is a false prophet. They cannot be both right. That's right. So I believe Jesus was telling the truth. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And when Muhammad says Jesus is a prophet, then we must believe that Jesus was telling the truth. So here's another question, Pastor. When people in America say that Allah is just another word for God, and that, that the word Allah is translated God, but is the God of the Bible, Jehovah, who has you know Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is he the same as the, the Allah of the Quran, or are they two different gods? Absolutely two different gods. They cannot be one. Why? Because our God is Rayun, and Allah is the one clearly, clearly thought that he's not Rayun. He is one. He is uh, absolute, as written in the Quran. No, no, no son and the Holy Spirit, which is written all over the Quran, Muslim claim it to be Angel Jibreel or somebody else. Muhammad did not know the true Trinity or the true Christian belief. Allah, the God of Muhammad, is Satan. He is the best deceiver. Read Quran chapter 3, verse 54. They deceive, and Allah deceive, and Allah is the best deceiver. He is the God of this world. Read Quran chapter 1, verse 1. According to the Bible, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world is Satan. He is the one who leads people astray. He is the one who desires to fill hell with people. These are the true teaching of the Quran about Allah, not the God of the Bible. Our God is a loving, he is a, he is a savior. He died on the cross in the person of Jesus Christ to give us eternal life. He does not desire for anyone to perish, but, but for every person, Muslims, Christian, any person on, on the world to come to know him as Lord and Savior. And that's how they can have eternal life. There are plenty of Christians by names needed Jesus as much as all Muslims needed Jesus as Savior. I just want I, to make sure that I heard you correctly. Did you say that Allah is the God of this world? In other words, the deceiver or Satan, the way that the Bible would describe Allah. And you don't think Allah is a, is a true God? Absolutely. Absolutely. God, Allah, as people in the Arab world they use the word Allah, is not Allah the God of Muhammad. You see, the word Allah itself is not even an Arabic word. It's coming from the Hebrew word Elohim. And it's just a title. The name of God in the Bible is not God or Allah for the Arabic speaking people. The name of God is I am. When Moses asked God in, uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 3, he said, what should I tell the people your name? He said, my name is I am, Yahweh. That is the name of God. Amen. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Usama Dakdak about the Coptic Christians in Egypt. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. You know, people ask me, Chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network, or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I want to make available to you a new resource, a four-part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. 
Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm joined with Pastor Usama Dakdak, live via Skype from Minnesota. Pastor, this is our last segment, and I want to talk about your Egyptian heritage. You were raised as a Coptic Christian, and these past three or four years, the Coptic Christians have been under fire. So much turmoil in Egypt. We saw the um, so-called elections, right, when when President Obama went over there to Cairo and gave his speech, and he wanted to have the Muslims, in fact, the Muslim Brotherhood, be in charge. And so they held elections, they uh, anointed Mohammed Morsi as the Muslim president, but then he changed their constitution. He instituted Islam as the only religion in Egypt and began persecuting the Coptic Christians. So then we saw an uprising, a million people in the streets, the Christians and the secular people demanding freedom from Islam. And then of course there was an overthrow and uh, Assisi uh, is now the president. He was in the military, but he overthrew Morsi Talk about democracy in Egypt. Is it even possible to have an election or is it just going to return to Islam? Well, brother, the problem we do not know is Islam. If we know Islam, we will know the answer to this question. It has been 1400 years since Muhammad claimed to be a prophet. And from that day until today, in 57 Muslim countries, there is no freedom because freedom and Islam do not mix. You see, Islam is a political re religious movement. It is not just religion as many people always think so. If you have Muslims, you must have Quran. If you have Muslims, you must have Hadith, which is the teacher of Muhammad and the Sunnah, what Muhammad did in his life. And Sharia, Islamic law, it is the teaching of the Quran and the teacher of Muhammad and how Muhammad conduct his life. So you cannot separate Islam from politics. It's like water, H2O. And if you cannot separate the hydrogen from the oxygen, if you do, then you lose the water. You lose Islam if you separate politics from it. Therefore, you will never see democracy, not in Egypt, not anywhere around the world. This, this is just a struggle the Christian in Egypt, the Coptic Christian in Egypt have lived the last 1400 years. And all this go back to the Quran. Christians in Egypt has been terrorized, not just the last 10 or 20 years, but has been terrorized the last 1400 years. As a matter of fact, when Omar came to invade my home country, Egypt, around 641 AD, four million Christian men were slaughtered and their wives and their daughters were taken by the savage, the Muslim invaders. And that's how Egypt became a Muslim country just within the first 100 years. And Muslims, when they came to Egypt, they practiced the Quran. What we saw in Egypt uh, 1400 years ago, it is what's happening today in Europe. And it is exactly what's coming to America tomorrow. Quran chapter three, verse 151, Allah said, we will cast terror into the heart of those who became infidels. And then he said, because they partner other gods with Allah, because Christians believe in Jesus to be God and believe in the Holy Spirit to be God, they were terrorized according to the teaching of them by himself. Allah in Quran chapter 8 verse 12, he said, when your, your Lord revealed to the angels, I am with you, so make firm those who believe, I will cast a terror into the heart of those who became infidels. So strike above their necks. That is decapitation. So, and he said, and strike off every finger from them. That's exactly what the Muslims have done in Egypt. And you can go on and on in Quran chapter 8, verse 60, Quran chapter uh, 9, uh, 59, verse uh, 3, and uh, verse 2, and verse 13, and all over the Quran, terrorization, terrorization, terrorization. This needs another show for another time to cover this in depth. Muslims have lived all their life from the days of Muhammad until today to terrorize Christians, 
to terrorize you, to kill Christians, to kill Jews, to perform jihad against any and everyone who does not believe in Islam, as Muhammad himself stated, I has been commanded by Allah to engage in war against people until they say there is no God except Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. That is the foundation of Islam. ISIS of today are nothing but a revival of the early ISIS, which was accomplished by Muhammad himself in the Saudi Arabia Peninsula 14 years ago. It is struggle. And thank God now we got a Sisi who is maybe uh, a, a little bit better than other. Uh, of course, he's still a Muslim man. He is so far pretend to be, uh, you know, uh, just and fair to all people. But even until today, a Sisi could not change the law of Egypt to allow Christian to build a church. It is still until today, from the day of Omar and the pact of Omar over the Egyptian, 1400 years ago until today, still Christian Egypt cannot build a church. It is ridiculous how we may think that Egypt have democracy. How can we have democracy and Christian cannot build a church or Muslims cannot become a Christian but to be killed by their own families? Well, that is well said. Pastor, we have literally just 30 seconds left. Would you lead our audience in a prayer? Maybe somebody is watching and they do not know Jesus. How would you lead them to pray? Sure, it's very simple. Jesus, as much as he loved everyone else, he died on the cross for the sins, he died on the cross for everybody else's sin. The problem is they believe in Muhammad to be a prophet. And Muhammad was not a prophet. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches from the fruit you know that Muhammad was not a very good man. He was a child molester, a sex offender, a prophet pretender, a womanizer, an adulterer, a thief, a killer, a thug, a terrorist, a killer. Read the Quran and you see this for a fact. Muhammad taught the Muslims that Jesus did not down the cross for their sins because he belonged to Satan and he does not want to see any Muslim to get saved. Jesus love you. He died on the cross for your sin. And if you believe in him, you'll be set free from your sin and you will have eternal life. This is the truth of the gospel. And that's what we'd like to share with every Muslim and every other person in the world who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. This has been Pastor Usama Dokdok, Dok, his website, thestraightway.org. We pray that you get his book, Exposing the Truth About Islam. I'm Dr. Chaps, and our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Please call our prayer line if you want prayer, 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.